Hello and welcome, my name is Evan Budson and I'm just going to have you give you a very quick run through of a new plugin released just recently for uh, Final Cut Pro um, that allows the direct import of files from the Canon 5D Mark II and the Canon 7D. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and actually download the plugin. It's available for free off uh, Canon's website and you'll end up with a DMG file which uh, to install it's a fairly simple matter of just double clicking and answering yes. In this particular case I'm choosing Oceania because I'm in Australia. I don't believe it actually makes any difference. And it will go ahead and install the plugin. Now what I've done is I've shot some test footage using my Canon 7D, a mixture of 50p and 25p material. And I've uh, gone ahead and plugged it in here uh, using a, a CF card reader. Um, so it's mounted on my desktop. And if I double click on that I can go and browse these particular files. It is important uh, that you keep the files in this particular folder structure. Um, apparently for some odd reason uh, the uh, Final Cut Pro Log and Capture won't work if you just have the files or if you have the files in a, non in a different folder structure than what is available uh, directly off the card. Um, so I would probably recommend that you just use the cards uh, as if they were uh, regular media such as for a P2, for Panasonic and so on. I'm just going to go ahead and um, switch across here to Final Cut, which I happen to have loaded. And let's start a new project for funsies and let's save my project. And we'll pop it onto the desktop and we'll call it Delete. Just so that it's uh, easily findable. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Log and Transfer. And you'll see my three pieces of media that I've shot uh, are available immediately. If I go ahead and switch across here to my preferences, you can see now I have Canon E1 EOS Movie selected, and then you'll see the transcode. Now it's important to note that this is not a, a native editing uh, plugin. It does not mean that you're editing the uh, the 7D or the 5D Mark II files natively. Uh, this this plugin will convert these files across to an Apple ProRes uh, codec uh, for actual editing. So it's not a true native editing uh, process, but it's the best you're going to get uh, for the time being. You can choose what form of ProRes you want to use. Um, I'm only using uh, Final Cut 6. Uh, with Final Cut 7, I believe there's uh, one or two other additional uh, ProReses available. But you see I've got my ProRes 422HQ and my ProRes 422. Um, and I click on OK. And I can just uh, drag my files in here. I'll just go and do this one here. And uh, you can see it's a fairly quick process. This is a, uh, what is it? It's a, uh, I think it's a seven second shot, which, but it's a 50, uh, 50 frames per second shot. And it's roughly, what, two or three times real time. A couple of things worth noting. Um, uh, one, because this is still a transcode process, you are converting from one format to another, it is still technically a lossy process. So you will be losing quality technically by doing this. Um, secondly, uh, also once again, because it is a conversion or a, uh, you're converting to another file format, you will still have the issues in terms of color space, uh, being that both Final Cut Pro, in fact, almost all of the converters uh, don't read this, the color space of the files correctly um, because they're not, not regular uh, color space for video. Um, so you will still have to, you will still notice that you will get the uh, slightly cr crushed blacks uh, that you get when converting footage. Um, this is effectively the same process as if you would use something like MPEG Stream Clip or Compressor, etc. The main two uh, benefits as far as uh, editors go are one, you get additional metadata in here. Um, basically what it's actually doing is it's using the uh, the timestamp uh, of the camera um, to give you your, your time code. So you can see this this particular shot was, was shot at 1.42, uh, this shot was shot at uh, 6.22, and this one at 6.23. So you get that additional metadata, um, and as well as the other main uh, benefit is it is significantly faster than those processes. Once again, I'm going to drop another file in here. This particular shot is a 35 second shot, and you can see how it's going. Keeping in mind, I'm running this on a 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro, pretty much one of the slowest Macs you can buy. Um, so it, you know it is a you know a fairly quick process. Um, it's not as quick as editing editing natively, uh, which would be very nice. But uh, Final Cut Pro being Final Cut Pro means uh, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Um, I can actually leave that one going whilst I go ahead and bring this file into my timeline here. I'm going to answer yes to let it um, adjust my timeline settings, and there we are. 
I have some nice footage there. It's telling me that um, this particular mission well, laptop's not going to handle it in real time, so I'll turn off the warning. Better stop that clip very quickly because the next thing I say is for a product that technically uh, I'm not allowed to say exists for another 20 hours or so. Um, you can guess what it is. It's got a C and an S in the name and then a number. Um, so as you can see, it's a fairly uh, smooth workflow. Um, it is not ideal in that it's not a native editing workflow, um, but it does mean that you can uh, shoot footage on a Canon 7D or a Canon 5D Mark II, bring those cards and log and transfer those directly onto your laptop, um, converting them to ProRes 422 files um, at a fairly quick pro rate. For the, those of you who do own a uh, 550D or a T2i, um, you can use those cameras as well. However, you will need to make some changes to the plist file uh, that comes with this uh, little uh, plugin. Um, I'm not going to take you through that now. There are plenty of resources on the internet uh, that can show you how to do that. Um, so yes, for those of you who have a Canon 7D or a 5D Mark II um, and you want to edit within a Final Cut Pro, uh, this seems to be, at the moment, the, the uh, best case workflow. So uh, thank you very much for watching my video. Um, by all means, uh, keep uh, looking at my website, uh, www.tdepost.com. Um, and we will have some very interesting news regarding native editing of uh, 7D and 5D Mark II files and Nikon D300 files, or D300S files, uh, fairly shortly. Uh, in the meantime, though, this is Evan Butson, signing out. Yeah.